Hello, welcome to this week's Bible study on Daniel chapter 11. In chapter 10, we read about an awesome angel who appeared to Daniel. The angel came to tell Daniel about the future, about the events that would impact the Jewish nation. The vision continues in chapters 11 and 12. So let's take a look. The fourth king of Persia, after Cyrus, mentioned in verse 2, was Xerxes, also known as Ahasuerus. He was the king who married Esther. He fought the Greeks, but although he had more forces, he was not very successful. But it was many years later that the Persian Empire fell to the Greek army, to a mighty king in verse 3. This was Alexander the Great. However, Alexander died young and his empire was split between four of his generals, as described in verse 4. Daniel's focus is then on two of these ruling dynasties in the south, Egypt, and in the north, Syria, known as the Seleucid Empire. The Jewish people had returned home to the land of Israel, and they were stuck between these two rival powers. Not a good place to be. The angel describes ongoing conflict between the king of the north and the king of the south through several generations. These people and events can be identified in history. I'll just give you some examples. In verse 10 and 11, it was Antiochus III who attacked Ptolemy IV of Egypt's army with a mighty army, 62,000 infantry, 6,000 cavalry, and 102 elephants, but he was defeated. However, Ptolemy IV did not remain strong. He was not interested in ruling, only in having a good time. Verses 18 and 30 refer to the Romans. Antiochus III was defeated by a commander from another land. This was the Roman consul, Scipio. Antiochus IV was confronted by a fleet of ships from Rome, commanded by Papilius Linus, who forced him to abandon an attack on Egypt. The despicable man of verse 21 was Antiochus IV, also known as Antiochus Epiphanes. He reigned for 12 years. His army was successful he rewarded his supporters and became strong. He claimed to be a god and was extremely hostile to the Jewish faith. He fought against Egypt and on the way home he attacked the Jews. Again he fought against Egypt but the Romans sent ships and forced him to give up attacking Egypt. Antiochus IV vented his anger on the Jews and began a reign of terror. The Jews were forced to give up their faith or be killed. So here are a few thoughts on this saga. The ongoing conflict was so pointless. It caused a lot of suffering, but no one really gained in the long term. Kings came to power and lost it again. They killed whoever opposed them but then they died. There are still power hungry regimes today. The cycle goes on and on. Empires come and go. Persecution still happens. Muslims and Christians are persecuted in China, for example. Christians are persecuted in many countries. Even now, Christians affected by the COVID pandemic are being refused food aid unless they convert to the majority religion in parts of Bangladesh, Malaysia 
India and Sudan. We may think that human nature is improving with time, that it's better now in the 21st century, but we should not be under any illusion. Human nature is what it always has been. The persecution of the Jews by Antiochus Epiphanes was so extreme that God warned his people ahead of time through this prophecy. This would give them courage that God was still in control, even if they didn't understand why he allowed the persecution. And it would reassure them, reassure them that the persecution was for a limited time. And it gives them hope that during this time, the people who know their God will be strong. The best way to prepare for trouble is to know our God. So how does knowing our God make us strong? Here are some ways. Knowing God's character, his trustworthiness, his power, his love, means that we can trust him. Knowing his promises gives us hope. Knowing his commands helps us make good choices, not being tempted into wrongdoing. It helps us be discerning and to be committed to the truth. Knowing God as our friend and as our father means knowing he is with us. His presence brings us much happiness and God himself strengthens us. So we do well to get to know our God. The people who know their God will be strong. Thank you for listening. Bye.